Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah amma ba'd. This is the second clip and where we are looking at the book from Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz rahimahullah where he is talking about the possibility of space travel and perhaps even man reaching the moon. And in the introduction, rahimahullah, he explained that a lot of people are asking what is the Islamic stance on these developments that this world superpower have achieved for themselves. So he says, Rahimullah, Now this is very important. In this clip, the Sheikh, for the first few pages of this book, highlights a very, very important principle. And remember we said in the previous session, even if you're not interested in the the topic of the book about astrophysics and you know space travel and what the Islamic stance on it is or not, there are several principles that the Sheikh puts down in this book which allows us to keep Islam as contemporary as it possibly can. So here he is saying, Rahimahullah, I saw it as a need for me to address this thing, this new thing that's developed. So that Tanirus Sabil, meaning I will enlighten the reader, the listener, as to what the Islamic stance is. وَتَرْشِدْ الْحَقْ فِي هَذَا الْبَابْ And I will try my best to guide you to the truth on this particular subject matter. And like we said, this book is a book of principles. And like we said in the previous session, a principle which is very important in our religion is that all ilm, all religious opinions and stances must go back to the scholars who will then base it upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Hence now the Shaykh talks about the importance of preserving your tongue, preserving your opinions until the Dalil has reached you. So he says in the introduction, even before he gets into the topic, he says, Rahimullah, Inna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala harrama ala abdihi al-qawl bighayrin. Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book has told his servants over and over again do not speak, do not have an opinion, do not have a stance unless knowledge has come to you, unless your opinion is based on ilm from the kitab of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet So for example in ayah number 33 from Surah Al-A'raf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a series of things which are haram and then he finishes it by saying It is haram for you to be lewd It is haram for you to oppress It is haram for you to make shirk It is haram for you to make shirk Do not speak about Allah and his religion unless you have knowledge That which you have no knowledge of, do not speak in Surah Al-Isra, the Shaykh mentions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 36, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Do not say something which you have no knowledge of, because surely, إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادِ Surely your hearing, and your sight, and the things that you think about, كُلُّ أُولَاكَ كَانَ أَنْهُ مَسُولَ All of these things, all of these senses, all of these properties, will be questioned on the Day of Judgment. And then the Shaykh, and the Shaykh's got a very good habit of doing this, Rahimahullah. Absolutely amazing and it's really beneficial. He will either quote the ayah and then give you the lesson and the point as to why he's quoting the ayah. Or he will give you the point and then quote you the ayah. He'll give you the benefit and then quote. So now he says, Rahimahullah, wa akhbar subhana. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, anna shaytan ya'muru bil qawl alayh bi ghayri ilm. That shaitan commands the person, human and jinn, to speak about Allah without ilm. And then it is up to you whether you were to listen to him or not. So Allah in subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah in ayah number 168 and then 169, Ya yuan nas, O mankind, kulu mimma fil awli halalun tayyiba, wa la tattabi'u qutuwaat shaitan Eat from earth, eat from what Allah has provided you from the life of this dunya, of those things which are tayyib and good. And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Shaitan will get you gradually. If he can get you wholesale, he'll get you wholesale. Otherwise, what he will do is he'll take steps. And he'll put you into a trap and you don't even know that you're being lured into that trap. 
Because surely he is an enemy. Now in the next ayah, Because from his steps, he will command you to do evil. And be lewd and follow uh, him in sins. And that you speak of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which you have no knowledge of. So from the footsteps of shaitan is that he will beautify for you to have opinions based on your desires or based on your whims or based on uh, things which are not based upon ilm. These are from the footsteps of shaitan. And how many people, which is very unfortunate, and as you can see in the beginning of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about all of mankind. Ya nas. How many people don't realize that shaitan is leading them up the path and they don't even realize it? Because these are from the khutuwat of shaitan, these are from the steps of shaitan. And they think permissible, 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 permissible until they end up in a place which is really dark. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on them, then they can reflect and say, you know what, I've been ignorant and I've oppressed myself throughout all of these steps and then they undo them but for a lot of people also they stay in that place where shaitan has led them to what is the thing that shaitan is doing here what are the steps number one he will tell you to be evil he will beautify you for you sin and from the steps of shaitan is that you speak of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which you have no knowledge of and with this, some of the ulama have said that people speaking and having religious views or views on the religion are of one of four. Are of one of four. Number one, the person is grounded in ilm and he has hilm with that ilm. Meaning he has an element of taqwa, he has an element of manners, he has an element of etiquette, he has an element of respect and wisdom and hikmah. So this person, not only does he have the correct understanding of the religion because he has the ilm, he has the evidences, he has the scholarly views and he also has the right approach to implement them and how to implement them and when to implement them. With ilm and with hilm, the person knows when to speak and with the hilm, he knows when to refrain and stop himself from speaking and from that ilm and hilm also the person will stop at which way he doesn't know because of that level of etiquette and respect and dignity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted for that person the second type of person is the person who's got ilm but he has no hilm so if you see what he says, it's based on the Qur'an, it's based on the Sunnah, it's based on what the scholars have said, but the etiquettes perhaps are not there, the manners are probably not there. He doesn't choose the right time when to say it and how to say it. And sometimes without that hilm, without that manners and without that etiquette and without that self-preservation, it could then lead for him to speak about things which are beyond his limits. The third category of people are those people who have no ilm and no hilm. Those people who have no ilm and no hilm. Meaning, he has no knowledge of the deen, he has no knowledge of the ulama, he has no knowledge of anything that is going on religiously, which is you know, based on actual ijtihad, and based on actual sharia. And at the same time, he has no manners, he has no wisdom, he has no you know, self-dignity in the way that he speaks. And then you've got a fourth category of people that he's got ilm, sorry, he's got no ilm, but he's got hilm. Meaning, it's not really religious what he is saying, but the way he is saying it seems as if it is quite respectful, that it's based on etiquettes and, as we've said, dignity and manners and wisdom, etc. But even that one is dangerous. The only one that is safe is the first one. Hence, the principle that we are learning from the Sheikh rahimahullah, is that you must preserve what you say and you must only speak when you are certain that this is based on the kitab of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet with the correct understanding from the salaf of salih and that you adopt it in the best possible manner that you yourself will benefit and the people around you will benefit. 
Then the Shaykh moves on, Rahimullah. He says, Wa Amara Subhanahu Ibadahu Minin Bitafabut fi Akbar al Fasakin. Another very important principle in the world that we live in, which is that anything that happens to you in the world that we live in today, whether it's space travel, it could be something else, confirm the information that has come to you. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Hujra, ayah number six. Ya oh, you who believe part of your religion now in Ja'akum Fa'asukum Binaba, if a person who is unknown has come to you and he's come with some kind of information, Fatabayyanu. Then clarify. And to see Bukoman bi Jahara, if you don't, then you could then afflict a group of people because of this ignorance that you've acted upon without verifying the information that has come to you. Fatusbihra alama fa'altum. Nadimin, and because of that, then you could end up in a state of remorse and regret of all you did. So then the Sheikh says, "Fala yajuz liman yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir an yaqul hada halal wa hada haram or hada jaiz or hada mumtani illa bi hujja." Nobody who believes in Allah on the last day can ever speak and say this is halal and this is haram or this is permissible or this is haram or this is not permissible or this is beyond our limits unless if he has proof. And if he doesn't have proof, the shaykh goes on, then he must refrain. And he must now say, Allahu A'lam, O La Adri, as the shaykh is saying here. And this is based on what we find in the Quran. So when the Malaika asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the reason why you are putting man on earth? Now it's reversed, not man on the moon, man on earth. What is the reason? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inni a'lam, ma'ala ta'lamu. I know what you do not know. And then the malaika said this principle, which is what the shaykh is teaching us. Subhanaka, la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana, innaka anta alimun hakim. Surely we have no knowledge. And how glorified are you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, except that what you teach us. And how many times the shaykh is saying here, and how many times do we find from the ahadith that the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they didn't know anything, when they were asked a question, when they were put in a particular situation, they said, Allah wa Rasulullah. Allah and His Messenger know best. Therefore, if you know the Islamic stance, then act upon it. If you do not know the Islamic stance, then refrain. If you do know the Islamic stance, but you are not sure whether what's happened is correct or not correct, then again you have to refrain until it becomes clear to you that this is exactly what's happened. And as a result, and this is the last point that we'll mention in this clip, as a result of people not following these two principles and these two golden pieces of advice that the Sheikh is giving us, وَعَأَذَمْ مِنْ ذَلِكْ وَأَخْتَرْ الإقدام على تكفير أو تفسيق بغير حجة يعتمد عليها. As a result, and from the most dangerous of things that have occurred because of people not having the Islamic stance and not verifying what's gone on, is that it's actually led for people declaring another person as a disbeliever or a uh, or an apostate or somebody who uh, is upon sin and you know an open sinner. Because of the fact that they've believed that manna has reached the moon. Because there is a group of people that denied it at that time. And I believe some people still deny it until today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. This is not the concern here. The concern here is, is that if you speak without knowledge, this is how extreme you will become. This is how aggressive you will become. But the shaykh is saying that this is not the right way. وَهُوَ خِلَافِ طَرِيقَ أَحْلَ الْإِلْمُ وَالْإِيمَانِ مِنَ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَجْمَعِينَ that this is not the way of the Salaf al-Salih. This is not the way of Ahl al-Ilm. And this is not the way of the people of Iman. That you speak without ilm. And you speak without verifying. And then it leads to this level of aggression. And you know. Um, uh, you know. Uh, chastisement of one another. This, is, this shouldn't be the case for the Muslim. Therefore. It's been lengthy in this particular clip. Two very important things, again, still part of the introduction. In the next clip now, the Shaykh, inshallah, is going to look at some of the objections that the people have raised when it comes to uh, space travel and man reaching the moon. But in this clip, the Shaykh has said for us, 
Rahimahullah, number one, verify the information that comes to you, or even before that. Number one, confirm the Islamic stance based on the Kitab and the Sunnah. Do not speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his religion without ilm. Wait for the ulama and took, take the, you take the understanding from them. The second thing is confirm the information that comes to you. And again, like I said, we're talking about space landing here, but this could apply to absolutely anything because these are two very important principles. As the Sheikh said towards the end of the clip, this is the way of the Son of Hassan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us steadfastness and the best of understanding.